Welcome back to Magical Task Force. Termentic here, and we've had another community day come and go. I've been put off making a video about it for the past couple days because I knew there would be some sort of announcement on Tuesday regarding either a brilliant event or something, and I was correct. Brilliant event information, a new crazy wild update. We've got all of that information for you today. I will leave time links in the description so you can jump around if there's something in particular you want to listen to, but I got to tell you, I'm really excited about this new update. I put off actually putting a video together last night because I wanted to see some of these features in person and just wow, I'm blown away. But first, let's talk about Community Day because I feel this was the best Community Day they have done so far. First off, I hope you were able to get your complimentary gift. This is a really awesome thing that they've been doing with the, the brilliant events or with the community days, things like that. They gave you enough to make a couple different EX potions, plus they gave you that really awesome trace potion. It was awesome. They had another one that you could buy for 200 gold. I didn't end up buying it just because like the brew times for EX potions were, were crazy. A friend of mine was actually using the rental cauldron and she was telling me that if you had all the ingredients and you put in the master notes, it only cost six gold to quick brew it, which was crazy. But the big thing, the talk of the day were all of the emergency spawns and of course that long sought after horn, a rumpet's horn. It was on the ground. It was crazy. I think I got probably 24, 25 a rumpet horns just from the event. Had never seen one before that in the wild. But those emergency spawns, let's talk about those real quick. I knew that we were going to get more. I knew that there was going to be an increase on them. But like, holy, like, wow. Like, there were so many time turners I saw. I was a little upset that it was only the time turner. We didn't get anything else, which I know that everything else pretty much was, for the most part, is inside of fortresses. But it's still, like, I was blown away. I want to say offhand, I saw probably between 50 and 60 time turners, and I only got to play the last two hours. Um, so it was kind of crazy, the, the amount that you actually saw. And that's not counting dark detectors. That's not ca uh, counting any sort of use of the trace potion. And it was awesome because with the Barufios, you were able to bust them out for about 1100 XP pretty much almost every single time consistently. And I noticed that they weren't easier to return, but they didn't flee as often. So you could sit there and spam it 10, 12 times trying to get it to return. And a couple of them did run for me, I'll admit, but most of them eventually I returned. And it was great, too, because with the increased energy that you could get from inns, then, boom, you were able to automatically just keep doing it. Plus, energy on the ground. I cannot talk enough about the energy on the ground. Um, it ranged, too. Like, uh, you either got one energy, two, or three. I never saw anything above three energy, but it was plentiful on the ground. It spawned very quickly. It was pretty easy to see as well. I did hear some reports of people not being able to find it using an iPhone. I have an iPhone 10 though, and I had no problem finding it. But the energy on the ground, the increased energy in ends just made it very, very easy to just keep throwing those spells at the time turners in order to try to return them because of that XP. It was crazy. Now, there were tons of the common spawns as well, too, and uh, it was really interesting. I went to a flagged area that was for Mysterious Artifacts, and I just wanted to double check because I know that some people did the same thing when the community day was nine and three quarters, and it was crazy. I go over there, I go to the flag area, and I see maybe one or two spawns. That's it. Like, there was nothing else that was causing them, and I mean, this was the actual... Uh, family registry that the event was boosting. Now, I went back afterwards, there were like 10 or 12 things like a normal farm would be. Now, the really awesome thing I'm proud of is my goal was to prestige my first page to gold. I was able to actually do that uh, on the community day. Super, uh, super excited. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I already have my gold page. Well, it's a lot harder for me to actually prestige some of these pages because most of the time when I'm playing the game, I'm actually playing it to get information or to try a trick or to do something like this in order to make a video. So it's a little bit harder for me to actually prestige things up, especially to gold. I do have a lot of silvers but that was just a little personal goal that I, I was really really happy that I was able to hit because like I said being a youtuber especially with this type of game it's it's kind of hard to play the game the way that normal people do because you're you're spending so much time trying to figure things out like for example I have another video in the works that I'm working on and I've literally gone through close to about three or four hundred spell energy 
just sitting there letting it, it, it drain out just so I can I can test something. But that's as for another video. This is all about community day and the update. Like I said, I was super stoked though about this this community day. I feel like it was one of the best events that they have put on so far. The amount of spawns, I, I can't talk enough about the amount of spawns. And I'm really interested to see what rule players went through because from what I've been able to find, it seemed like the spawns were consistent, whether you were in a rural area, an urban area, a city, what have you. Um, the only big difference with uh, my gameplay is that I was actually, for the most part, at a, a national park, and I do know that parks seem to actually spawn more. That's just a theory of mine, but parks do seem to actually give you more foundables to return and almost a better variety of foundable as well. Now, the last thing I want to talk community day-wise is a little Easter egg that Niantic and WB uh, put inside of the community day, and it was pretty awesome. Uh, there's a great video that James over at Wizarding News does. I'll leave a link in the description. Definitely go and check it out. Like I said, tons of good information in it, but Cliff Notes, they boosted the amount of challenge XP that you could get from a sponsored fortress now they didn't announce it there was nothing to actually give it away or anything like this that's why people are calling it an easter egg it was a little bonus that they decided they wanted to throw in for people who would try different things and i encourage you to go and watch james's video like i said over at wizarding news but i agree with him though that i really like the idea of these easter eggs in these events because it gets you to not just focus on what the event is but also to try different things to test something out and it's, it's really cool as a gamer, especially an RPG gamer. I really, really, really like that aspect of being able to find something special or something secret that not maybe everybody will actually be able to experience in a game. So pretty awesome. Definitely makes me want to go and uh, try Fortress Challenges next time there's a community day or any sort of event, especially at Sponsored Fortresses. This XB bonus only happened at the Sponsored Fortress, not at regular Fortresses. That's kind of one of the ideas why people think that it wasn't broadcasted because not everybody has access to a Sponsored Fortress. Now, I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, this update is huge. There's so many cool things that they added to this update. The first one I want to talk about is the ministry idea and being able to see what your achievements finally are. Now, I know that a lot of people have been asking for this so they can actually figure out exactly why did I get this? When did I get this? Things like that. And you've always been able to know when you got it, but now you can actually tell what the achievement is. And it's, it's beautiful. I'm, I'm so excited about that just because now I, I can actually be like, oh, that's because of this right here. Bagrat the Goblin can also be taken a picture of now in AR mode, which is pretty cool. I'm glad that they're continuing to add uh, different foundables to, I guess, that exclusive list that you can just take pictures of wherever. And it's, it's kind of cool, too, because it's, it's giving me the idea that I really want to try to take more of these AR photos. Now, this is just one looking at a window that I have in my house. But I, I just wanted to show you that it's cool. They keep adding these. And every time they do a major update, it seems like they're adding more and more of these foundables you can take pictures of. Now, this is a big one that I'm excited about. You don't have to click all of the portraits and the frames and the stickers anymore when you actually take a photo. Uh, like you see right there, I just opened it up, took the photo, and boom, come right back out, and I don't have any of the red dots I had before. This right here, though, is game-changing. So now, if you make a cast and it is a successful cast, you don't even have to watch it. If you tap the screen as soon as the cast is made, it will skip to the end animation where it gives you the experience. Now, I don't know if this is what they intended when they actually changed this, but this is huge because this saves you so much time if you're in an area that's a flag area or like during a community day or anything like that because you're just you're only skipping let's say two to four seconds but still you add those two to four seconds up by 50 by 100 by 200 encounters and that's a good chunk of time now it will not skip forward on the animation if it is not a complete cast like if uh, it won't isn't going to return the foundable it won't skip the animation at all um, or if the uh, foundable is going to flee, it will not skip the animation. It only skips the animation when it is a successful cast that is going to return the foundable. Now, something else to note is that it will not work if you haven't returned the foundable before. So if you have zero fragments in your registry, it will not work. You need to have at least one fragment in your registry in order for this quick tap to work. 
So you know how you'd be walking around and you'd finally open up a port key and it pop up. You've unlocked a port key and you'd hit it and take you to your port keys and then you'd hit X and it'd be like, you've opened up a port key and then show you that again and take you back there. And it would do that. However, let's say you had five port keys opening at the same time and it would show you every single time. Well, that's not how it works anymore. It will only pop up once regardless of however many port keys that you actually have open at the, simultaneously at the same time. But also, if you use the quick port key uh, trick, which is to hit one wax spurt and then back out before you had no idea what your rewards are. Now they've actually changed it to where if you do that and you back out, it will pop up and tell you exactly how much or what rewards you actually got from that port key, which is really cool because this way it will give people a way to track. Is it better for me to only pick one wax spurt and leave, or should I pick all five? Plus, also, for people who accidentally step out of the little blue box if they're in AR mode, this will automatically show them what they got from the port key as well. I had a 2K port key, though. Wanted to check it out, see what it was. Only big difference is at the top, it says port key reward summary instead of just reward summary. But as you can tell, though, right here, I still get a fragment. I still actually got some sort of ingredients, XP, things like that as well. So it does work. It's really awesome that it tells you exactly what you get now. And like I was saying before, with a regular one, this is a picture of a regular port key um, that I picked all five watt spurts. At the top, it just says rewards summary. Last few things about the new update. If you are at a challenge fortress and it is sponsored, there is the chance now that you can get spell energy as a reward, which is pretty cool because that gives you the extra excuse on, oh, I'm going to try to find that challenge fortress because you might be able to just sit there and keep doing it if you get enough uh, spell energy as a reward. Not sure how much you actually can get yet. I'm going to have to check that out myself. Next one is you can skip the shuffling animation in greenhouses, which is pretty cool. I'm uh, a little stoked about that too. I'm really big, big about being able to skip useless animations that you don't need and the greenhouse one it was cool the first like dozen or so times you saw it but after that get out of here with it so i'm excited you can actually skip that now too and lastly, the last thing they talked about yesterday during the update is the next Brilliant event. It will take place from October 8th through October 14th for week one. Week two will be October 22nd through October 28th. Now, the name for it, from what I've found, is Fighting Forces. And so that made me really start thinking that maybe what they're going to do is kind of... Like, if you think about with Community Day, they went from family in the registry to challenges to family in the registry so maybe we might actually be getting our first uh, brilliant event that's more focused on fortress challenges i don't know remember we have all of those photos in the back of the registry that we haven't really been able to see or do anything with um, especially in the challenge area that's where i'm talking about and there's been a lot of talk about them being raids well it would be really, really cool and a really awesome thing for them to do if they jump-started and gave us our first raid. Now, that might be why the name of it is Fighting Forces. I'm not sure. Maybe it's some sort of uprising of Death Eaters because we've been seeing Death Eaters in the challenges. Or could potentially be because if you uh, actually have one of the books for uh, the, play, the play guide for Wizards Unite, one of the things that uh, people have been questioning is if you go in there, there's actually dark witches inside of the playbook. So maybe there'll be the introduction of dark witches. Not sure, but really excited about the brilliant event, especially for all the people that were not able to go to WooFest last year and missed out on those green books. As soon as I get more information, though, on the Brilliant event, I will definitely let you know. My name is Termentic. Thanks for sticking around and checking out the video. Make sure to give it a like. Subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. Follow me on Twitter, at Termentic. It's where I post a lot of breaking news. But as always, have a wonderful day.